11 million dollars for more police on campuses a, a stop order to take guns away from people deemed a threat and what's being called enhanced background checks all part of governor doug ducey's school safety and gun violence plan but so far it looks like a plan that does not make anyone really happy welcome back to politics unplugged and joining us now to talk about school safety and gun violence our state senator Martin Cazada and Representative Maria Sims, thank you both for being here very much. Now, first of all, this is just a draft proposal with uh, the, the, the governor has put out there. First of all, I'd like to get uh, your take as the resident Democrat here right now. <laughs> um, obviously, you guys have been opposed to anything that does not include uh, expanded background checks. Uh, this proposal, the draft form right now, includes none of that. Right, it doesn't include that at all, and I think that's the biggest uh, the biggest reason why it's going to be a failed plan. Uh, it's not going to increase safety at all, and it's going to uh, really just leave um, the ability for uh, dangerous, uh, mentally ill, and convicted felons to get their arms on weapons still. Uh, without addressing that, we're not addressing the problem. Now, Republicans have some other issues with that. Maybe explain what, 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 what you're hearing from members of your caucus about this draft proposal. Well, first, let me say, Dennis, I respectfully disagree with Senator Quesada's take on uh, the draft proposal. We've had a lot of bipartisan conversations uh, also with the governor. This is in draft form. We're working through some of the issues. And as a mom, my primary focus is to ensure school safety and have impactful legislation that protects that and also protects our individual freedoms and liberties. Why not close the so-called gun show loophole? Now, I've talked to some uh, Democrats, particularly Randall Fries over in the State House, or your colleague over there, and he says we don't need universal background checks, but just close that uh, that loophole at the gun show where someone can walk in there by a weapon with no background check. So let me say that I think that if we t approach this problem from the extremes of either side of the debate, we are not going to achieve my goal, which is impactful legislation that promotes school safety and reduces the likelihood of mass school shootings. That is my goal here. When we talk about a gun show loophole, if you really look at the statistics, most of the mass shootings did not happen because of a, of a open gun show loophole. So I don't put that in the category of an impactful solution. Let's get away from the rhetoric. Let's get away from the idea just put out by Justice Stevens that we want to repeal the Second Amendment. And I'm so glad he did because it, it, re it reveals the true agenda of the progressive left to, uh, to repeal the Second Amendment. This should not be an issue to soapbox on rhetoric. This is an issue of school safety, the safety of our children, and coming together to find common ground. Out. Care to respond to that? Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think it's obvious that they're trying to paint this as a radical proposal, uh, universal background checks. Mm -hmm. But in reality, the majority of Democrats support this. The majority of Republicans support this. The majority of ind independents support this, and the majority of gun owners support mm -hmm. this. This is common sense, and it's being painted as a radical proposal uh, only to satisfy the gun lobby. Now, another sticking point uh, has been out there is the 11 million dollars for the school resource officers. A lot of people, uh, you know, uh, on your side of the aisle, have raised questions about why. You know, we were spending money to put more cops on campuses. They should be putting uh, that money towards counselors. What's wrong with the idea of putting an SRO on a school campus? I mean, you're hardening up these targets. You're sending a message to people who may want to do right. harm there that if you go on campus and do this, you're going to meet resistance. I think if, if that were actually the case, I think it would be it would be a good proposal. But all of the research shows that uh, more increased SROs on campuses actually don't work. Uh, so all we're doing is we're putting another gun on a campus. Uh, and I, I think that there are better ways we could be spending that money uh, on uh, mental health, on uh, behavioral uh, uh, therapists and counselors on the campus. Those social workers, those types of things would actually identify the problems before they ever get their hands on a gun. Now, school resource officers, as a Republican, are you guys in support of that, that funding to increase those resources? Well, I can't speak for all Republicans, obviously, Dennis, but I, as a mom who just dropped off my daughter at public school this morning, I would feel more comfortable knowing that there were school resource officers there to protect her. And it does work, respectfully, Senator. We just had a shooting in Maryland where a school resource officer, a hero, ran toward the danger and saved lives. So it does work. The proposed package not only has money for school resource officers, which is much needed, but also for behavioral health. You can respond to, to her. She's, she's telling you that she, it, it works, and you're saying it doesn't. Well, we, I mean, we can point to isolated incidences all the time, but the, the majority of the research out 
out there, and you're talking to educators, you're talking to law enforcement, will tell you uh, that this, this it, it, it has no, it doesn't move the needle in terms of school safety. Uh, educators, uh, law enforcement, they're opposed to this gun plan as it is right now. Why aren't we talking to those if we're talking about school safety? And let's talk a little bit of numbers here. We're talking about $11 million. That's about 100 school resource officers. That nearly doubles the number that we have right now. So you're looking at over 200. There are 2,000 school campuses, or nearly 2,000 school campuses across Arizona. How is that going to solve a problem when you just, you know, have a very small percentage of these schools uh, seeing these resource offices on campus? Well, first of all, it does work when it's your child and there's a school resource officer in the way. It does work. Uh, we have to look at this problem holistically, right? So it's not just the school resource officers, and we are doubling them, and we need to increase that and shore it up. We also have to empower our teachers and our students to know what they can do if, if a tragedy occurs and, and em empower them to have the appropriate lockdown procedures, evacuation procedures, that there's adequate communication with law enforcement. Third 39, that's a number, that's a statistic everybody should be talking about. 39 reports on this, this young man in Florida, uh, the killer in Florida, and nothing was done. But you yeah. can't legislate but against it, human incompetence. But, but, but again, we're talking about now 200 school resource officers for the state. What about the 1,800 other schools who don't have one? How does that protect them? We're going to have behavioral health uh, addressed in this in this package. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have, uh, again, shoring up empowering teachers so that they know what to do in this situation and school administrators. School resources officers is another aspect of this. Mm -hmm. Addressing mental health issues. Mm -hmm. All of these things come together to reach the goal, which again, is reducing the likelihood of a school shooting in Arizona. Now, are you happy at what, you, what you've seen in this draft proposal right now? Are you happy with how the governor is addressing school counselors? Um, you know, there are some there are some good elements to this plan, but I think uh, at the end of the day, it's unfortunate it's not going to work unless we address the real issue. And what's happening is we are approaching this problem from the wrong end of the of the spectrum here. Mm -hmm. uh, we're we're assuming that guns are going to come onto campus. We're assuming that shooters are going to come onto campus, and we need SROs there to protect them. Instead, we should be preventing that that situation from happening in the first place. Mm -hmm. That's where the mental health comes in. That's where the social work uh, comes in. That's where the counselors come in. If we focused our efforts there, we could we wouldn't need us. SROs at the end. So we have, we're basically saying that we're failing in the attempt to prevent guns from entering on campus in the first place with this plan. All right, there then. is one area I can agree with Senator Quesada on, and that is we need to enforce the laws before it happens. And uh, when we have a society now where we have sanctuary cities and illegal immigrants, and we have the Kate Steinle issue, and that poor young man at the Quick Trip in Arizona who are shot by illegal immigrants who, who obtain guns illegally, and we're not enforcing those laws. I think that we have a problem and we need to address those things as well. All right. Well, that uh, segment went by really quickly. Obviously, we didn't get to everything we wanted to, but I'm sure this debate will continue.